Hey there, everybody. It's really uh, it's really good to see you today. Um, we're going to be talking about one of my personal favorite tools for prayer, especially during um, the final times of Lent and during this Holy Week. We're going to be talking about the Stations of the Cross um, and how you can use those to deepen your relationship with Jesus and especially coming into the Easter season. You know, how can we better relate to the person of Jesus? So a little bit um, about me. My name is Aidan Niano. I'm a junior in the College of Business um, and an active member in the campus ministry community. Um, and I'm really excited to take a deep dive into what the Stations of the Cross mean to me and how you can maybe apply them to your own spiritual journey. So for me, the Stations of the Cross are super important. Um, they've been a really active part of my prayer life for many years. Um, and what they do for me more than anything else is really hammer home and really solidify and uh, create the sense of personability between myself and the personhood of Jesus. So a little bit of background about the Stations of the Cross for those of you who maybe are new to it. Um, there's typically 14 Stations of the Cross, um, beginning with the time when Jesus was condemned to death and ending with his um, placement in his tomb. Um, and today we're we'll focusing a little bit more um, on the scriptural stations of the cross because I find that having a combination of scripture and history, and I'll also be introducing art into this, is a really, really, really full way to experience the stations of the cross. All right, so we're gonna be talking about three stations um, of the cross that to me have been very impactful to my faith life. And they'll be covering sort of the beginning parts of the stations of the time that it covers, the middle, and then the end to kind of give a full experience of kind of what the stations of the cross can be like. So the first station that we're gonna be talking about today is the first station, third station, fall somewhere around there, um, and that is Jesus's condemnation by the Sanhedrin. And um, here we're gonna show um, a piece of art that will be pretty consistent throughout the other um, stations that we talk about today. Um, but I just think, you know, combining this, this piece of art, this beautiful art with, um, the scripture in, in Luke's gospel in chapter 22, uh, we're able to get this, re this really amazing imagery of what Jesus may have gone through. Um, and when I reflect on this, I constantly uh, find feelings of abandonment and of betrayal by Jesus's peers, and it creates a deeper connection between myself and Jesus. So around the middle of the Stations of the Cross, we have Jesus meeting the women in Jerusalem. And this is a really, really powerful um, image because we have this person of Jesus who is suffering, who is, who is walking to his, his death. Um, and he selflessly gives himself to these, to these people he sees, to these people he loves. Um, and that reminds me of times when you know, I've been going through a very hard time and I've had to swallow it and sort of give this thankless um, sense of comfort to to my friends or to my peers or to my family or to whomever. Um, and it's really comforting to know that my Savior has been through this and it really makes it easier to connect with him and to be with him. Towards the end of the narrative of the Stations of the Cross, we have Jesus dying on the cross. And this one is, is certainly the most powerful for me, um, saying that Jesus is earthly, Jesus' bodily preaching in the world is is finished. And the disciples are left with this sense of, of waiting and this sense of, oh, what do we do now? The sense of uncertainty. Um, and that must have been really hard for Jesus to to leave his closest friends with this sense of, of unease. And I've certainly felt this in my own life, where maybe I haven't been able to continue an important conversation with my loved ones or my family and things are just left on a really bitter note and it it's really comforting again to know that my savior has experienced these emotions so there you have it that's um sort of how i look at the stations of the cross and how i interpret them and how they impact my own prayer life and i think it's really important to to use this amazing prayer resource um, in your not only your lenten or your 
or your Easter journey, but through the journey throughout the whole year, throughout your whole life, there's a lot of really amazing things that you can get from the Stations of the Cross. So I've included two um, links to resources that you can find, the iconography that I've used for all 14 Stations of the Cross, as well as the USCCB, which is an amazing resource for um, all things scripture, mass, prayers, whatever, whatever have you, you can most likely find it on the USCCB website. So thank you so much. It was a pleasure getting to talk to you guys, and I hope to see you guys in Milwaukee very soon.